All right, January 12th, I am in New Orleans. There's like 10 tickets left, so get the last few. Houston and Dallas are sold out on the uh, 14th and the 15th. January 26th to the 28th, Phoenix, Arizona, come and do in a comedy club. I'm doing a comedy club, no theater, Phoenix. I'm doing the club, working on some stuff, getting the new hour ready. So go January 26th, 28th, see you in Phoenix. February 1st and 2nd, Cleveland, Ohio, another comedy club. We've added hilarities. We may be adding a show because tickets are almost sold out. They almost sold out in like two hours. So if you want to get Cleveland, Get the tickets right now. February 22nd, Vancouver. And then February, I think it's 24th and 25th, we are adding Napa, a show in Napa Valley, California, and a show in San Jose, California. The California Theater in San Jose, and I think Uptown Theater in Napa Valley. Tickets may be on sale right now, but if they're not, go to christycomedy.com and check out if you live in the Napa, San Jose area. And then Florida at the end of March, christycomedy.com. Oh, and Austin, Big one, I'm opening up Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin the first week of April. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. Today, my guest is sexy. That's how he's been described. Sexy, hot, everybody loves this guy. I'm going to lick his head. It's Sean Evans from the Hot Ones Podcast. Hey, thanks so much for having me. What an intro. What's up, baby? What's up? How you doing? Dude, Sean Evans, I like that name, dude, because you could go either way. You could either be a small white man or a large black man, or <laughs> you could be anything. Sean Evans. Is it S-E-A-N? Small white guy. S-E-A-N, yes. Wow, you don't go S-H-A-W-N. No, S-E-A-N. S-E-A-N. Dude, you got great teeth. Oh, well... I bought them, but thank are they you. fake your yeah, teeth? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. When did you buy them? Uh, about a year and a half ago, I think. What happened? Were your teeth all messed up? Well, I just didn't like them. I was just self conscious about them. So then, you know, like when you have a job like this where you're on camera all the time or right. like you're pictured all the time, like any insecurity you have becomes like a thing. A thing. So uh, I told myself that would be like the thing that I did when I could. And when I had the opportunity, I did. And I'm happy I did. Yeah, dude, your teeth, I mean, it's literally, I, I can't believe they're fakes. <laughs> they're, shout out Dr. Ahmed. Wow, shout out Dr. Ahmed. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. <laughs> good dude. Um, good chick. Dude, the, good way, chick. the way you're holding cool that microphone chick. makes me horny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah, you are gripping right? that thing. Oh, I like it. I kind of, I always do it like this. Now, it's like, like very like a uh, rap battle. I now, feel. how do you feel that to, uh, well, all of us, we all um, in here, we are, first of all, we're very excited that you came here. We weren't going to do a thing. I'm sure it's got to get annoying for you where every time you do in it, like not your own show, people are like, do you want to eat this? Is this slice? How about that? You eat this. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. We're not doing that. A hundred, uh, like, yeah. No. Do well, I saw when you did the interview with Sal how yeah. miserable you were eating spicy food. Yeah. So that's what kind of made this like an easy yes for me because I was like, there's no way Chris is going to ask me to eat based on what he went through. No, you know? and it's like also like be original. At some point, like really, you think, you know, dumbass who has Sean on your show that he wants to eat spicy food. Is that what you think he wants to do, you fucking assholes? And because I think that it's like, um, I already do it a lot. Like I'm already prolifically eating really spicy yes. food. So how many days have I kind of ruined off of like doing the hot ones gauntlet? I then don't want to do like a podcast or the today show or something like that. And then eat more spicy food. Like whenever anyone asks me to eat, like that's just like a quick and easy pass. And then I think they think though, like, Oh, well that'll make it like big or that'll make it like special. No. Or that'll make, but I'm always like, I don't know. People eat, see me eat spicy food all the time. Yeah. No, like, I don't think it's that big. of No, a deal. that's why I, here today is we're going to have what we're going to do is we have Venity has gotten three different of, of hot sauces and we're going to have we're going to bring in three people and you're going to eat them out of their ass. So we're, oh, okay, you got to cool. choose whose ass you want to eat. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. At least this is a unique spin. It's on different. the concept. Yeah. No, we're going to do this. We're going to do hot ones, but we're going to play it with guys. OK, <laughs> so first up hot. We want to know, oh. is this a hot one? Hot or not? Chris Helmsworth. Super hot. Hot? Uh, yeah, super hot. Now, I think you, I saw him one time. Like I went to uh, like an Avengers like sort of thing where we shot with Scarlett Johansson. Okay. And then, but like they were all there just yeah. sort of like walking around. Yeah. And I remember like an elevator door opening, me walking out 
him walking this way and we kind of like gave each other like sort of like self-affirming head nods yeah but he's one of these guys you know like you work in entertainment you see people and like a lot of times like actors are a lot shorter than you expect them not him he's like way taller than you'd expect him to be which i think just like adds to the mythology look he's huge and look at that hair i'm trying to get my hair like that but it's not working (laughs) yeah you and me both and then uh, yo, yeah, <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr. Hot? Do you want to eat hot sauce out of his ass? Uh, you know, if it came down to it, definitely like just a, a, a good-looking dude. Saw him too, actually, at like a UFC event, and pretty yeah. much translates. I want to put grated cheese on his hair. <laughs> it looks, it's it like looks, it's already there, dude. It looks like scongealy pasta. <laughs> I like it. it's nice rigatoni hair. I like it. All right, let's go. Who's Kim Jong Un? Hot or not? You know, everybody's got, you know, like, uh, everybody's got their own thing. You know what I mean? Like, is it for me? I don't really see it. But, you know, everybody's got their own taste, their own preference. Well, we have, well, so that's a no for you? (laughs) That's a no for me. Well, then, what we have here at this podcast, and we'll always call it out, (laughs) stop the Asian hate. (laughs) (laughs) Joe Biden! What do you want to eat, hot sauce out of his diaper? I mean, yeah, for like, (laughs) (laughs) for... For his age, not horrible. You no, know? right? For his age, not horrible. Uh, wouldn't want to eat hot sauce out of his diaper, though. No, okay, but you I'll are saying hot, that. though. So he's so the only one who's not hot so far is Kim Jong Un. Everybody else is hot. Yeah, but I put, I'd put like not Joe and hot. You know, I've got a high bar for hot. Got it. Which hey, I respect that. That's why you're the pro. <laughs> who's next? Jerry Nadler. Do you want to put hot sauce on his nipples? Uh. Same deal. Same deal uh, with the other old, uh, conventionally rather yeah. unattractive guys. Right. I'll put them in the in the not category as well. Okay, here we go. MLK, Martin Luther King. What do we think? Hot or not? Hot. 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 Yeah, you got to go hot. You, you better go hot. Go hot. We're two <laughs> white guys. You better say hot right away. You better not or your show's out of here. All right. Who's the last one? Sean Evans, oh. folks. Hot or not? Look well, at that. You know, I don't know. Like maybe there, uh, maybe I'm. A, I have a biased take here, so I'll leave this one to you. Thank you. <laughs> I first of all, I'm going to say hot because, especially in this picture, not so much in real life, but I guess this is before <laughs> the fakes. But in this picture, you do have Irish dock worker face. Oh, which really, thank you. which really, I like. I like. You look like a guy who's who's good with his hands. You look strong. You look tough. You look like you have a sense of style, and I like it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to put hot sauce all over your head and lick it off. All right, let's see where this goes. So I'm, I'm going to say hot. Could you imagine I was like, we're not going to do hot sauce today, but I literally was like, I want you to hold me down and pour hot sauce down my dick hole. Would you do it? Uh, I mean, you know, I'm a showman at the end of the day. Yes. You know what I mean? So you know what's got to be annoying for you? You know what's, you know what's got to be annoying for you? Uh, the amount of people who try to just get on your show. Oh. Isn't that like, how do you do? Well, I know you have yeah. people now who do it, yeah. but it's got to be like, like, Beyond annoying. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of times like you'll go to a thing and then like go to an after party and then because I'm just naturally kind of a nice guy. Like I'm just like yeah. a Midwestern sort of like yeah. nice guy. But that is kind of challenging for me then when like someone who like, you know, too, because there's a whole sort of universe and like another universe and another universe of famous people. You know what sure. I mean? Nowadays, like now, like everybody's, so somebody will come up to me. I don't know who they are. They'll be kind of like talking to me and like, and then some of them do have kind of like a pressure or like a yeah. press on it because yeah. they see this game as being like so competitive, you know? Yeah. So they'll be like trying to like corner me and I'm just like trying to play nice with it. So it is kind of an annoying thing or like the Instagram DMS that I like, I kind of don't see. I, I usually just try, try my best to establish a line of communication with as few people as possible. Smart. Now, if that's like people who are in entertainment, if that's like publicists or yep. whatever, it's just like, yeah. you know, I don't see the messages. I don't see the yeah. emails and I just don't establish yeah. that line of communication, but it is like, Somewhat annoying, but also a good thing in the glass half full way because it means, you know, like it's better that problem than the problem that we used to have where we can't book it. You know? Yeah, it's a champagne problem. Well, that's why yeah. we, we tried, we tried, we send Vanity into Honeypot, yo. And, it, and, it, and, it, and you know, no, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, and so, and so, no, I'm kidding. I, but I feel like what you said actually is really powerful about not allowing people to have communication with you and like putting up a wall between you and others. I think that's just smart for mental health and overall your health. It's better. You shouldn't have, 
I think we live in this world where like we're all connected, but that's not the way the human brain was designed. We're not all supposed to be connected. We're supposed to all kind of be in small groups and just, I mean, help everybody. But I'm saying like the fact that a, a million people can have access to you, that's not good. And, and it's good that you keep them at bay. No, and, and I guess like the other side of it too is, uh, you know, we only do one show a week. Like there's 36 episodes so it's a little bit like a magazine cover for us. Yes. You know what I mean? Like we're not just like a late night show that's cycling through three or four guests at a time. And yeah. then there's a lot that goes into it in terms of like shooting, hitting the peg with their promotional window, like in the thing pegging. that they want. So <laughs> pegging. So a lot of the spots get like eaten up. And then I think that there are a lot, sometimes like people kind of talk to me as if we should just drop everything that we're doing and yeah. like turn and burn for them. And then I also notice a lot of you guys have shows, but you never ask me to be on that show. Right. I'm just supposed to exactly. drop everything that I'm doing, you know, like, yeah, like, why do they exactly. come out with the be like, oh, we got to do a hollow ones. Let's shoot that. You know what I mean? I'll be like, well, I don't yeah. What know. about like, me? Yeah, yeah. What about me? Yeah, exactly. So like it's, work it, have like kind of like uh, five or six steps before you get to that finish line rather than just me yeah. trying to like do it for you. you Everybody know? just wants to fuck right, right away. Right. It's like, take me out to dinner first. Like, let's be now. The, are you going to have Zelensky on? <laughs> We'd like to have I, Ukrainian I, president the Zelensky. He, I don't know. He is kind of ripping through the media circuit. Could you, you know what I mean? Like, he's like on the promo literally circuit. left the war front to do hot ones. <laughs> I would love it if Zelensky left the war front and did hot ones. Oh my god! Yeah. And then he didn't know the show and he just shot you because it was too hot. I mean, that's the yeah, or like Putin, Zelensky, truth or dab. Let me be honest with you. Let me be honest with <laughs> fuck Mary Kill. Um, <laughs> Let me be honest with you. If Zelensky came on Hot Ones and left the war front and shot you, I would, and you died, I'd be so sad. I'd genuinely be so sad. But my first move would be to extract your teeth. I would take your teeth and sell Damn. those puppies for big money. Okay? Cause the, right, well, you've got dibs. Yeah, because you the YouTube dibs, numbers are going down here. So I got to sell Sean Evans' teeth. I have a question. Oh, Pimp's got a question. Has anyone ever pressed you where you're actually scared of them, of saying no? Oh, yeah, like thug, like thugged out? No, so. no, I never never like that. No, it's always just uh, it's always just mildly annoying or, like, nice and cordial. Like, it has a range to it. It's either sort of, like, nice and cordial and, ha, ha, yeah, right. nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Or, or it gets mildly annoying. It's like, all right, well, let me get your number. Where are you next? You know, like, when it gets like yeah, that. Yeah, it's pushy, it gets, pushy, when it pushy. Gets pushy, it gets annoying. No, did you didn't set out? Like, did Hot Ones, I know you came up with the show, but what were you doing before that? Did you set out for a career in entertainment? Yeah, I mean, I was a broadcast journalism major in college. So there, I guess that means that there's always kind of like a part of me that like saw a future in which maybe I was on TV or something. Yeah. But I kind of thought it would be in talk radio. Like I grew up on like Stern and Loveline and, yeah. uh, you know, Letterman and uh, Kimmel and Man Show and like all of that. Like those are kind of the formative shows for me. So right. like, I guess like, but then it's not a normal job. It's not like you graduate college and then you go and you interview at all the accounting firms and then you decide on the job sure. that you want. You know, like there has to be a weird set of coincidences and circumstances that lead you to an opportunity like this. So I was working as a, is actually a copywriter for uh, basically Chicago's tourism board. And then uh, in my free time, mm. I would take like freelance magazine sort of assignments mm. uh, if they needed like some interview locally in Chicago or whatever. And that was just my way of keeping Did you ever interview Jesse Smollett? <laughs> no, no, that was, that would have been way after, way after my time. But then I would just keep these, like these sort of, uh, things that would come in just to keep my eye of the tiger sort of thing. Yeah. And then in 2014, I went down to all-star weekend in new Orleans oh, and sick. I was supposed to, I had interviews with like two chains and, uh, John wall and Damian Lillard and all of these people that were kind of supposed to be for print, but it was when complex launched their YouTube channel and they were like, can we put these on video? Like we just need to like throw video videos up on our yeah. YouTube channel. So I was like, please do. If I get a two chains interview on YouTube, that'll be like the sickest thing that's ever happened Hell in yeah, my pathetic dude. life so far. <laughs> and then, uh, and then they offered me a job like 30 days later. So quit my job in Chicago, sold all my shit, broke the lease on my apartment. And then I was in New York 30 days later working in the uh, magazine office over there. Then I met Chris Schoenberger, who's, uh, was the GM of First We Feast at the time. He was had this idea for a show, and he was like, well, what if we interview celebrities but have them eat increasingly spicy chicken wings? It was just like a Cupid's arrow into my brain. We shot a pilot with Tony Yayo, and then oh. seven or eight years later now, we're just still doing wow, it. Wow, that's so, it just happened like that, all out of New Orleans, which I'll be in New Orleans on Thursday. <laughs> 
at the Civic Center. Now, who was the so, worst? Who was the worst interview ever? Like, who was the hardest to interview? Uh, well, you know, counterintuitively, it's usually a very positive shoot experience. Like, I think in the same way people come on to Howard Stern and they're uh, like, back in the day when they come on to Howard Stern, they're like, oh my God, or like, why is he asking me these questions? Like, I think people yeah. went in with the mindset to do the Howard Stern interview. And I think it's the same for Hot Ones. People come in to do the Hot Ones interview. So I'd have to dig deep into the crates to find one that like just on set just didn't ma mesh. But like, if I go deep and this is super deep, but if I think about like one person who walked in and was like, what the fuck is this? Like, why am I here? And then kept that energy all the way through, all the way out the room. It'd be uh, Mike Epps. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. just is like, I don't want to be and here. I remember he had like a suit on because he was doing, I think, like a full day of press. Yeah, yeah. And we were like his first stop. Or he might have done oh. the breakfast club at like six in the morning, but he was eating wings at like 9 a.m. and was just like, how did I end up in this situation? <laughs> Has anyone ever walked off? energy. Like no. fully walked off set, like I can't do this? No, we had DJ Khaled tap out after three wings, which uh, is yeah. sort of an anomaly and sort of its own kind of viewer right. experience because of that uh, and super unique. But no, we've never had anybody just like walk out. I think they go in most of the time, 90% of the time, they go in kind of knowing what's up. Now, what are you going to do? We, I can't, like if I came on Hot Ones and I had a reaction to the wing, I can't sue you. You sign paper that I, I yeah. cannot sue you or is somebody going to sue you one day? <laughs> no, we do. Uh, there is a pretty comprehensive, like legal heavy paperwork. But when we first started doing the show, we'd never made a show before. So we were just operating like Wild yeah. Wild West style, you know? And then one day a lawyer came in and kind of like kicked the tires on what we were doing and was like shocked. And then, right. so now there is, now there, now we are uh, covered. Okay, so I think that that's good because I feel like when I, especially in today's world, it's like, you know, somebody eats one of those wings, they have explosive diarrhea or, you know, they're shitting blood or whatever, then they're going to sue poor little Sean Evans when it's like, it's not your fault. Okay, first of no. all, sh sh sue Sh, sh Gagger. What's his name, who owns? Schoenberger, yeah. Schoenberger. Yeah, yeah. Get, it's his fault. It's yeah, his, yeah, yeah. Henry it's Rollin Gardner's fault. fault. It's all okay? his fault. All his fault. So I'm happy that you're legally protected because if, if you know, because here's the one thing we know here at the Chrissy Chaos Podcast, we know a thing or two about lawsuits. Oh, yeah? You've been oh, sued? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to sue me? Get in line, baby. There's a five-year wait. Um, so we what we like to do is when we have... Guests like yourself, we go on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. Only way to get involved in the show and ask questions to our, our guests is we had the fans chime in with some questions. You posted your picture, said, what about Shawnee Evans from Hot Ones? What do we think? And here's some, some of the questions that our fans uh, came in with from, um, um, let's go. No, where, there was one. Where, is that, are these the ones that we picked? Let's go inappropriate. I mean, we're on hot ones, baby. Let's go. Let's go. This, what is it? Ghost pepper sauce. What's the hottest one? What's the hot sauce? The hot top oh, one? Carolina Reaper. Oh, yeah. Let's go. This is Carolina Reaper questions. <laughs> Too hot for TV. Yeah. Hot ones. Anyone ever pitch you like cold ones? You know, there is a cold ones. Really? That, yeah, that yeah. bit off your show? Yeah, but uh, not like in the way others kind of bite off of our show. But yeah, they, and I was on it, actually. Um, shout out to Max. Uh, shout but out uh, Max. but uh, yeah, they do. Uh, they do a podcast thing where yeah, you drink instead of eating the wings. Oh, it's beer. Yeah, yeah. Cold. Oh, what ones, about like having? I cold thought ones. it was like things. Oh, like super cold things. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. Like cold ones. Like cracking a cold one. Like you drink. Got it. Okay. Um. So here's here's one. What? Which one? This one. I-69 myself, I-69 myself on Patreon wanted to know, hey, babe, what's the toilet bowl looking like? You know, it's not as, because I, you know, sometimes people, I think because I'm on YouTube, you become like a little bit more accessible. Like, I don't right. think people run up on Jimmy Fallon the way they run up on me. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. And so sometimes people be like that. Like, whoa! Like, I'll be yeah. like in line at a sweet green. I'll be like, what are your shits like? You know, like that. I'll be like, Jesus. You know, right. like. Right. You know, um, like you don't talk to you don't talk to Colbert that way. You know what I mean? Like you could though. You're if not you running to. up on Drew Barrymore and asking her questions like that. So, but uh, but I, but it's actually like early on doing the show. Like I'd remember like red eye flights and having like cramps and like feeling uncomfortable. But what ends up happening is your body just kind of adjusts. So now at this point in the evolution of the show, it has no effect on me whatsoever. Like after a shoot. 
I'll go to Equinox. You know what I mean? Like there's right, no, right. it doesn't, it doesn't throw a wrench or disrupt the rhythm of my life like at all anymore. So early on it did, but like this whole thing and like the people run up on me and that are like that, like you're off. Like it's not, it's not a, I can't wait to see Sean in four years doing the show with a colostomy. Pack. I mean, that is who knows, who knows, who knows like to what extent the walls are closing in on me. And I'm just sort of like on borrowed time, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's, or it's like being an athlete or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you develop into like a physical prime. Well, do you find yourself, being like you know i can't do this show for another 10 years because i constantly have because you're like like not abusing your body that's the wrong word but it's like you know there's pain to go along yeah. with this well so here's honestly the way that i look at it because it is a little unprecedented and i don't think it's like the capital riots it's unprecedented <laughs> and i don't think like i ever i don't think i ever like envision doing it for this no. long either yeah. too. So, but then once it's a thing, then it's a thing. And then you just ride the wave and try to keep up with the speed of it all. Just you know keep what I'm going. Saying? So to me, the way I look at it is I look at other people like, Ray Lewis, how many seasons did he play in the NFL? Yeah. Like, what's and more then he killed a guy. What's more dangerous? Allegedly. True. Allegedly. What's more yeah. dangerous? Allegedly. Though? What's more dangerous, <laughs> though? Uh, <laughs> is like playing middle linebacker for the Ravens or doing a hot ones episode. Right. Like, look at Steve-O's career. He's never looked better than he does right now. And think That's about all point. the stuff that he's put himself through. So I think like when you look at people who just kind of like sacrifice for their art, like, yeah, there's a physical toll to it, but I can look around at just people right now and think to myself like, well, is doing hot ones more dangerous than that? Maybe I'm an idiot. Like maybe I'm a moron for having this mindset, but that's the way that I look at it. And it's not, I, at this point, I just kind of like love the show and love doing the show and right. love the people that I work with and can't imagine what I'd be doing without it or like, what if you pivot to it? Or like, I had a TV experience, not sure that I like love the idea of like yeah. TV. So it's like kind of being the sort of king of my little castle right now is just so perfect for me. So I hope, I hope I have more years left. Dude, doing you it. have like amazing, positive, like great energy. Like it's, isn't it like, all, like your energy is like amazing. I literally want to, I wish I could push a button and turn into a chicken wing so I could be in your mouth. <laughs> uh, this question, I genuinely mean that. This question from Locust Magoo, this is kind of similar to the hot ones thing we were doing before, but if you just indulge, if you want, if you had to pick a hot sauce to lick off a butthole, which sauce would you choose and whose butthole would you want to lick it off of? You don't have to answer if you don't want to do it, I'll do it, but if this is just from Locust Magoo. Well, you uh, know, s speaking of Steve-O, he has a sauce called literally... Steve-O's hot sauce for your butthole. Really? So I think... <laughs> what a good name. That if ever you were to pair, you know, like if you were yeah. to do a culinary pairing, right? that would be the first bottle I pulled off the yeah, shelf. Yeah, why not? Right. Yeah, it, it just it, makes it, the most sense. Tried and true. Tried and Tested. true. Tested. Um, now, there it well, is. So let me ask you a question. Do you, when you're filming the show, like when you're actually filming those 36 uh, episodes, do you are you filming like banking them like all in a week i guess i'm trying to ask how many times a week throughout a calendar year do you have to subject yourself to the hot sauce so it's basically uh i mean in a perfect world you know if you have 36 shoots and it's like 365 days in a year like yeah in a perfect world you're shooting an episode every week or every week and a half you know what i mean right. but that's not how it works so we are just sort of opportunistic and the show travels. Like I leave, we have our first shoot of the year on this week on Wednesday. Then I fly Ooh, to where are you LA. going? Oh, well, we're shooting it here in New York. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Breaking it here to the chaos <laughs> listeners. But Ooh, then I'm the new Barbara Walters. <laughs> but then I'll like fly out to New York, shoot a couple or fly out to LA, shoot a couple episodes out there, fly to Miami, fly to LA, fly to New York. Like oh, okay. the road show just kind of starts. So sometimes like you'll stack, you know, you'll shoot, uh, you'll do two weeks and shoot five episodes. And that means you can like take your foot off the gas for a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, but the other way could happen too, where it's like, shit, it's been two weeks. We've only shot one episode. Like, we got to get gotta moving. Book some shoots, you know. So, so, so from from a gastro and from from a gastro point of view, you ha your your body, you get time to. You're not eating hot sauce all day every day. It's like, no, no. You, and, and and you're not gonna go out. You're not gonna go get I like spicy it. right right food for dinner. You're gonna eat something. Yeah, so it's fine. So yeah, exactly. That's the way I look at. it. You don't know how many bullets you have, you know. So I'm yeah. not wasting any bullets. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's more or less how it works, and uh, it's been. It's 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 good. It's good. It's going right. good. Any any of uh, uh, ever bring hot sauce into the bedroom? 
No, but you know, this uh, whole podcast conversation, you know, like <laughs> the mind is oh, sort yeah. of wandering a little there bit. There is 100% <laughs> a fan listening to this show lubing their dick up with hot sauce uh, right now. And I'm telling there's people that do that. There's people that they, that's what turns them on. Uh, you, but, you know, I've had, I've, some sort of like accidental cross pollination issues because like when you eat the wings, you get the sauce. Yes. Then you know you've I've made some I've, every rookie mistake you can make with hot sauce I've made. made so it. there's that you know like oh I'm gonna take a piss after the episode, touch your dick, light the whole place on fire situation. Yes. You know yes, so it's like yes. when you do that once you stay away from it. So maybe there are people maybe there are people that have experimented with the uh, hot sauce lube or whatever, but I don't think there's anybody who's done it twice. Right. Now, are your mom and dad proud of you? Yeah, I think so. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean, uh, like, it's funny because uh, they don't always know what I'm kind of doing. You right. know what I mean? Or, like, or especially early on, um, if they see, like, oh, Sean interviewed DJ Khaled. You know, yeah. like, but then it's, like, once we shot, like, the Ricky Gervais episode, then my dad's, like, oh. Or, like, then you're on Colbert, and then you're, like, oh. And they then get like, it. The, you get, like, the frozen chicken in Walmart, and they, like, see it when they're shopping. Stuff like that is right. when it, like, kind of connects with connects them. Connects to them. All right, that's good. Yeah, because I feel like what I like about you is you kind of followed a path. Because I got, you have kids? No. So I got two kids. I got two biological daughters. Who knows what they'll be when they grow up. But right now, biological females. <laughs> And, and we'll support them in whatever they want to do. And, you know, honey, if you're listening, maybe Sean, Uncle Sean, will make a hot sauce for you. So, <laughs> so, so, but what I want, because there, you, you're, you haven't followed a traditional route. You got into, you know, journalism, thinking like I'm going to be a journalist or whatever. And then, you know, TikTok comes out and everyone's a freaking journalist now. And you're like, well, I'm going to find this other way and take a chance. And I respect that about you. I, I kind of think like, you know, when it comes to creativity, stuff like this, like you can't really go to school. I feel like the ones of yeah. us that go to school for it, then you become like cookie cutter and you're not cookie cutter. You're doing something very different that now so many people are trying to copy and emulate, but it's like, there's only one. It's like, you know, you mentioned uh, Sal Volcano. We have the, the Hey Bay podcast. I know, you know, Sal, like the Impractical Jokers is such a great show because it's four friends, an organic friendship, no traditional route. They just made that thing. And now it's like, everybody's like, oh, let's put four people in a thing and have them do a thing. It's like, no, stupid. There's only one hot one, Sean Evans. There's only one Sal Volcano, and there was only only one Barbara Walters, and she's gone. Do you think you could have, at the last moment in there, given a little hot sauce and woken her back up and gotten her back to life? <laughs> well, what could it have hurt? It couldn't have hurt anything, right? <laughs> right. I know. Uh, Barbara Walters would have been a good guest for you if she was able-bodied. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Salute and respect to the legend. Love Barbara Walters. But what you were saying... That's what I thought, you know, because there was Brazil. Everyone stormed Brazil. The, they, they stormed Brazil? They sto the Brazil, they riot, there were riots in Brazil, kind of like a capital riots, like January 6th riots, but in Brazil uh, a couple of days ago. And I thought it was Barbara Walters. They were upset about... Barbara, but oh. yeah, they came in, they had, see that, yeah, you know, they're Brazil because of the fake butts. <laughs> All right, back oh, to you. Oh, they're kind of like I bringing do, it. I do have a question. Speaking of what Chris is saying, you're very inspiring. For young creators, what's like one piece of oh, advice? Thank you. Like, well, I, you know, I think, and maybe this is kind of cliche, but it's like totally true in that, uh, I never like I when we did hot ones. It wasn't like I was looking at anything else and being like, "Oh, I want to do that." I was just kind of a painter obsessively painting this thing that I had, you like know. Hitler. And I was like, just doing, it. <laughs> just doing, just kind of doing it, like because I wanted to, or like right. needed, or like almost needed to. Right. And it's not even that I had any goals, like, "Oh, I want a million subscribers," yeah. or like, "Oh, I want to be rich." That's what or I like, got. Oh, I want to be famous, or anything like that. I was just like, "Oh, what a like unique opportunity! This is kind of what I've always wanted to do." let's make the most of this opportunity and put everything we have into it and just see where we can take it. Like nobody ever gets an opportunity like this. Like what an idiot I'd be to try to not take full advantage of it. But right. it was never anything other than me knowing what escapism provided for people. Cause I was kind of like a latchkey kid. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was kind of like a, in front of the TV kind of kid. And so I remember what that did for me, like what the, 
TGIF Family Matters Christmas special did for me or like what South Park on Wednesday nights did for me. You know what I mean? So yes. then I just want to kind of create that. So when I think about the Thursday 11 a.m. upload, like who's there, who's like working in a cubicle, has sort of like a, uh, okay, like, like relationship with their professional life, but they love that on Thursdays they can watch the Hot Ones episode during their lunch break. Then all they got is an afternoon after that and Friday and then it's the weekend. And the way that it can kind of pace out your life right. and be just sort of like this dopamine hit that you can depend on and that you can look for. And all I was trying to do was deliver that to other people the way that that was delivered for me. And that was the only thing that I was trying to do. So I think when people get a little bit off or where their thing doesn't, or where I don't think it lasts or makes sense is when they start trying to chase those other things. Cause it's like really hard to reverse engineer that. And kind of what you were saying about how impractical jokers, like if you try to take it and put other people in and try to make it happen, it doesn't work because I think anybody who's like successful and has longevity in this industry, it's just, because it's almost like a natural expression yeah. of who they are as people, but it's just like coming out in this different well, th way. I think too, what I'm, what I'm hearing, you, you, like, you, I feel like artists like that, like there's no, like you don't resist, like whatever happens, happens. You're like, I'm just going to roll whatever the next thing is. You roll into hot ones. You you'll roll into whatever your next endeavor is. And I think that's like a big key. And that's what I try with my, kids well my oldest one that the the little one is only one so and she's fucking crazy and um and, 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 and but the older one i just tell her like whatever she wants to be in life like don't resist like there's going to be hard times but it's like i feel like people that try to resist and try to make like i'm gonna be famous i'm gonna make money that's not how it works i heard oprah say once the money comes second and so I, I, I literally think like that's what happens here with you. You have this mega successful show, but you didn't set out for that. You said, I was like, as you just are. So are, by the way, you're so articulate. Like I literally, you're not gay, right? <laughs> no. All right. So, and no, because I'm trying to, I'm, you know, in a relationship, love my girl, but I'm trying to, you know, get out for a year and I want to come out of the closet and like fully say to the world I'm gay, but it's all really, and like, you know, relationship with a guy, full, fully go into it. But it's really all with the hopes of like just getting, you know, because if I, I can't just say I want to get out of my relationship. She's going to be like, I'll fucking kill you. I'll kill every bitch. But if I'm gay, now she's supporting me and it's a supportive thing. And I have her support as in my endeavor with my new husband, Sean Evans, who's not gay. And then, <laughs> and then, and, and then she goes and finds someone and then we can just be co-parents and I can be happy and then I'll break up with you and then go back out and, you know, be my true self, which is a heterosexual-ish male. You know what I mean? Preach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, speaking of this, because I told you I was going to be in New Orleans, so I want to talk about Louisiana. Look at this police officer got sentenced to 100 years in jail because they, after his wife used his semen in cake batter, he was jerking off into the wife... Uh, knew she, he, what, what would he do he would put the semen in the cake batter and then they served it to kids was what it did, kids or just what, served what, it to I, were they selling it i'm not quite sure right was, um, a, um, bake sale during a bake sale they got a hundred years in prison not enough not, right i know isn't that i kind of feel like because the first time i saw a hundred years i was like that's harsh but then it's like you're willingly jerking off into cupcakes it's like no and feeding them to people you know like yeah uh, not enough and did just the wife or did he he's got to go it gets too. a little complicated there's some uh images and uh child abuse images that were oh that's what it is okay so, so it's child abuse but this is one of the many charges got it because i was going to say not with the child abuse stuff not into that at all but if it was just simply jerking off into a cupcake if you i was going to say to the livingston parish uh sheriff's office deputy dennis perkins and his wife <laughs> cynthia if you want, Thursday, we have standing room only at the Civic uh, Theater in New Orleans. If you're close by, bring the cupcakes. Um, but not with the child porn. You can get the fuck away from me. Fuck you. We don't mess with that. But I think, you know, I mean, literally, but you have to say, though, if it's just semen in cake batter, probably, because you don't know about it, would be more pleasurable than eating the Carolina pepper sauce. If, if I said for a week, you can, there's a little Push semen comes in the it. shove. But you, you don't know about it. It just tastes like a cupcake. You don't have to go through the pain of, you know... Just a thought. Um, what are you doing after this today, Sean? 
You know, uh, you guys are in kind of an awesome location. I was like, I, since I'm down here, I might as well do some shopping or something. Hell yeah, you know? dude. Where are you going to go? I don't know. I'm going to maybe just kind of explore. I think I'm just going to set out and like how we were talking about, I'm not going to rigidly put myself in any yeah. kind of a plan. You know, I'm just going to take my arms, put them like this and float to wherever yeah. it takes me. You know, Just get out. Yeah, just make sure you keep it here. Don't go any higher. <laughs> um, so, so, but that's nice. So you have kind of a free day today. What a beautiful life, right? Uh, a little right? bit. Like, I got to do some work tomorrow. But yeah, you're right. Like, right? it is a nice life. It you is just, a nice it's, life. It's really like, I feel like sometimes we can make our, our brain does this thing where we want to make up our own problems. I just feel like most of us, like living, if you're living in America, I understand everybody, I'm not, I, don't, I hate generaliz- generalizing because that's stupid. But, 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 but a good amount of us put, we put ourselves in these problematic areas and we put ourselves in these prisons where it's like, everything's actually okay. Like everything is just okay. And whatever your problems are, are most likely you're making them bigger in your head. Like, cause it's your choice, right? Like I, I, I learned this. I have a, a, I had a, had a, a friend who he passed away young. We were at the same age, but he got a di- cancer diagnosis at 22 years old. Stage four cancer, he only had like six months to live. And he took it instead of taking it like, oh, what, woe is me, whatever. From day one, I don't know what happened privately, but out and about, he was like, every, every day in my life is great. Every day is a fucking party. But that's true. Yeah. That's beautiful. And sometimes it takes those things. But yeah, we should all recognize that. Now, here's the question. Yeah. What are you going to do? Situation like that. Situation like that. Guy's dying of cancer. Great guy. Only got a couple of weeks to live. Dying wishes to come on hot ones. Do you give him the hot sauce? <laughs> he mu- yeah. Do you kill him? Well, listen, no, no, no. I don't want, well, but it's, here's the situation though, is it's like, uh, but I'm not going to deprive a dying man his wish. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, I think that's all my responsibility. I think in that moment, you right. know? Would you have Ellen on? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it, like with everything, you got to just kind of do like a cost benefit analysis of the situation, right. you know, like I'm not necessarily like if there's a guest who's like, it has like a Q score that's kind of in the toilet or whatever. I actually don't mind it. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? But right. I have to like really fuck right. with what they do. I think, yeah, you like know what Kanye, I mean? Uh, no, like Kanye's, I don't know. Would you Kanye, you know, we'd have him. Why on. not? Yeah. Spicy. Why not? No. Yeah, uh, it's tough. No, but too radioactive see, now. But like, yeah, right now. But yeah, three weeks ago, Kanye. Why the hell not? Before <laughs> well, Alex a lot Jones. of people. Sh- yeah, a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On. yeah. All right. I do have a question. It's oh. like making the podcast rounds. Uh, do you believe in ghosts? Any ghost stuff? Yeah, I do. do. Oh, oh, I do. You do? No, because Pimp Pimp loves to ask every guest about right. ghost stories and like the app. So, do you actually have like a supernatural anything? So I did. Okay. This episode sponsored by. Better help. You know that I love better help. If you're feeling overwhelmed, stress gets to you, it gets to me. I use better help. It's literally helped me feel more empowered. It's teamed me up with a therapist that really worked for me. It took me two tries. Um, and then we got the therapist matched up, and I've been with that person for two years now. So I really appreciate it. Better help is awesome, and it's all done from the comfort of your own home. It's all online. You don't have to go to a therapist's office. You can do this in your underwear and your socks because your mental health is the most important. Healthy mind, healthy body. Happy mind, happy body. Beautiful mind. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, which is huge. A lot of times therapists try to do things to make you stay with them, not them. They're like, whatever's best for you, which I like. If you want to live the more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Go to betterhelp.com slash chaos to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash chaos, 10% off your first month. Love you, BetterHelp. All right, I found a great new place for T-shirts. True Classic, okay? If you, what you basically, you know me, I've been, I've been trying to work out and everything you need to hit the gym is from True Classics. True Classics for a limited time only. I'm gonna, daddies, I'm talking to you. Let's get snatched in 2023, baby. The only way to get snatched is in True Classic, okay? There they are right there. True Classic bringing me my t-shirts to make my nipples feel good. Basically what True Classics are, why I like these t-shirts, it gives you that wide shoulder and tapered bottom so it makes you look absolutely jacked. And the quality of the t-shirts is elite. From going to the gym to your first date, there is no better look than a fresh tee. You know me, I'm always searching for t-shirts that hide my shitty little body and True Classics do that. 
wide shoulders, tapered bottom. I love it. And they just released new button downs and chinos, which are perfect for a night out. I love true classics, ultra soft tees, briefs, hoodies, and much more. They have a pack builder on their website where you can customize the bundle you want and save even more. Trueclassic.com, promo code chaos, get 25% off your order plus free shipping. Uh, included on purchases over $100. New year, new me, new tees. Thank you to True Classics. One more time, trueclassic.com, promo code chaos. That is 25% off, 25% off, and free shipping, all orders over 100 Thank you, True Classics. Here's the thing is like, whatever. I kind of think that, you know, anything is kind of, I'm not like, oh, there's no ghost, there's no alien. Like, whatever. I'm kind of like, just who knows? You're being, you're, knows? you're enjoying yeah. your human experience. But like I that. do think that I did live in a haunted apartment. And I have like two kind of, I'll make them kind of quick stories, but no. I have like things that I like just can't explain. So I had this uh, apartment in Chicago. It was an old apartment. And it did like while we were living there, like, you know, like creaks and noises and Who's stuff. Late? Uh, it was my buddy Trent, so we were roommates okay. out in Chicago, and uh, there was like some like squeak, there was like squeaking and cracking, and like did I leave that door open and like just stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it could all just be like old apartment stuff. Plus, sure. it was near the L, so like the trains ripping by, so there's like a lot of different things that can happen. So, there, but there was just like kind of a weirdness that we used to joke about be, it being haunted. But there are two things that stuck. So we used to throw these Halloween parties every year, and we'd have like you know those plastic jack-lanterns full of candy sure and uh we'd keep them around the house and it would be nice because you'd just be like walking by even after the halloween party for weeks you know like there's candy you just walk by grab something so one day not I, you you're skinny mini <laughs> but i like i'm a sweet tooth though so, oh, so am i oh oh that's oh, nice look at that <laughs> things that come by the way real quick 32 waist ah 30 oh wow yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's bulimic. Uh, <laughs> Thirty, but but I, I'm I'm light framed. Like you're a little bit more framed out. Yeah, than fat me, shaming, you know fat I mean? shaming. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just like like uh, you have like a linebacker frame. You right. know what I mean? Like even like whatever and i have like more of like a, a punter frame well i i lost uh actually 30 pounds i'd like to talk to you, you about good. intermittent fasting oh okay. no no i'm kidding <laughs> i know i talk I, I i bring up intermittent fasting too much but i after the show I'll, like, I'll text you about it go ahead okay um so <laughs> so one day i'm sleeping and i hear like a rumbling like in the okay in the in the jack lantern right and it wakes oh. me up and i'm thinking it's my roommate trent who because now it's been a couple weeks and so you just have like almond joys and like weird candy that nobody wants i'm thinking he's digging in the bowl trying sure. to find that snickers and it just yeah. won't stop like the rummaging that i hear in the mm -hmm. candy so then i'm up but then i'm like oh i'm up now and trent's home like i'll come hang you know sure so i go to wake up i go and i open up the door rummaging 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 open it in the hallway where the thing is rummaging stops so i'm like whoa what the fuck so then I go and I look in the I look in the bulk. So I'm thinking like, did a mouse get in there or something? Yeah. Like, why was it rummaging like that? And then I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. I walk back to sleep and I just kind of like I'm like that was weird. But then I'm like, maybe I was like asleep and thinking whatever. So I go lay down. I'm got the door closed, lights off, lay down again, trying to go back to sleep. I hear the rummaging again. So now I'm like, am I in a horror movie right now? I remember having these very conscious thoughts and I walk over like slowly and I like go and reach for the handle slowly and it's like rummaging, rummaging, rummaging and I crank it open and it stops again. Whoa. So that is just like, wow. maybe there is an explanation for that. Maybe I missed the mouse the first time or something, but it's fucked up and I don't, I can't explain that one. And then the other one that wow. was weird. Give me the chills. And then the other one that was weird is, maybe it's COVID. Is and then maybe there's an explanation for this, but I'm just I'm just saying like what was in my head. So there's another one where I came home and uh, there was this girl that he used to kick it with, like hanging in the living room. So I come in, I say hi to him, and then I go to the bathroom. And it was like a, or I go to my bedroom to go to bed, but it was like a one bathroom apartment, right? In the bathroom, you'd have to like walk through the living room to get to the bathroom. It's like right when you walk through the front door. So basically, I'd have to walk through the whole apartment to get to the bathroom. Um, I go to sleep, and in the middle of the night, I wake up, 
and I'm walking down the hallway and I'm looking at this living room and they have these big windows, right? And we're on the third floor. So we're kind of at like this, the height of the street lights. So it would kind of have this glow that comes inside. And I could see on the couch, like wild hair like this. And I thought that they were hooking up on the couch. So I didn't really like look at it, but I could like see things, hear things. And I saw like almost like Medusa like hair, you know what I mean? That could have been hers, but it's like right. all is like right. a shadow in like from this light that's coming in from the room. But I'm like, fuck, I have to pee. So I'm like walking and like trying not to look and like trying to be quiet, but also like Trent, like <laughs> what's going on sort of thing. Go to the bathroom, walk out. And like, they're still on the couch and like, there's, Things on the couch, like stuff happening on the couch. And I go- It's and not I, them. Like, what do you mean stuff so, happening? So I assu- I'm assuming it's, it's them. them. I'm assuming Having it's sex them. sex or something yeah, or something. making out, whatever. Right, something. Yeah. And, but I'm trying not to look. I'm just trying to be, yeah, like, be respectful. respectful. Yeah, be respectful. Yeah. And then I walk out, I go back to bed. The next day, I'm just busting his balls about it. I'm like- Bro, we only have one bathroom. Like, your bedroom's right there. Like, you can't just, like- Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Bring her to your room. Yeah, Let's, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. I'm having that talk. He's like, what are you talking about? And I was like- you guys on the couch last night. And he goes, we didn't hook up on the couch last night. And I go, what? I was like, like two o'clock in the morning, I woke up to piss. And he was like, she left like five minutes after you went to bed. Wow. So those are two things in that same apartment. Freaky, man. That I can't do you think? Do you think it's following you or you think it's the apartment? I don't know. I don't know. Here's the deal. And maybe there is some sort of like explanation for those things or like there's branches hitting the window or something. But I, I just remember in that time both of those things. And they're both in the same apartment. So I do feel like there's a coin flip chance that I was in a haunted apartment. And it gave me sort of like a newfound sort of like – respect for the supernatural i think right or wow. perspective anyway Freaky, yeah. well dude that the, the left when when they when your roommate said they he, she left five minutes after did your like the hair that you have left yeah, stand yeah. up yeah <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> did all of it all all five strands like, <laughs> like that yeah dude they say drinking one soda a day can increase risk of baldness in men do you drink soda yeah actually i fucking maybe that's the situation because i fucking love like the other day I had like an IBC cream soda for the first Ooh. time in like 10 years. Yeah, cream soda is And the it best. was hitting. Yeah. Like I was like, holy shit. Like I forgot how good this is. I was just like taking it like straight to the dome, like the romantic way that like alcoholics talk about. Yeah. You know, like I, ha- I think I have that with like just like delicious soda. Well, let me, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. And I know the people in this room agree. You pull off, you're like Michael Jordan with baldness. <laughs> Your bald look, no, it is you. Like you have the perfect head. For, I almost think you probably look worse with hair. Yeah, I think this so is, too, right? Isn't it I the way so he too. looks is bald? Yeah. It's, Cause you almost don't, you're like Jason Statham where you're like, you don't even realize <laughs> he's bald. No, seriously, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like no, you're just kind of like that. that thing where it's like, wait, you're not bald, what are you talking about? Cause it's just your look. Yeah, and too, I think you're right. Like back when I had hair, like I, I look back on it and I'd be like, I don't think I'm like a good hair guy. Like it kind of no. like curls earlier than it should. And yeah. I think like it would be kind of a problem. So um, like, there's a lot of people that get, uh, that get, you know, my thing was my teeth, but I never gave a fuck about going bald. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the oh, teeth wow. I was self-conscious about, I never gave a shit about going bald. Still don't give a fuck about going bald. You didn't resist. Cares? You didn't resist the baldness. I didn't care. I didn't happen. care. Yeah. It didn't really matter to me, but I do think you're right in that I did, get blessed with like at least sort of like a good head just a good it. head good like head a good it. solid like again like like a like michael like who are famous iconic bald people i like the statham one statham. that you statham. Statham. i think he's, sta- he's our yeah. jason statham because yeah. statham's not doing movies anymore now statham's on youtube <laughs> sticking hot sauce down people's throats <laughs> where is jason statham has anyone heard of from jason statham I watched. Oh, no, there's a bunch of. I've been watching his movies, Jason Statham movies, by the way, for some reason for the last two weeks, all on HBO Max. Jason Statham, he he plays the same character. It's the same movie, but they are phenomenal. Nothing's hotter than when he whispers. Yeah, he is jacked, by the way, and yeah. you're jacked under there. I could tell that you're fit. <laughs> Were you ever fat? You ever go through a fat phase? Uh, I think like not like a fat phase, but like there are times like in college and even like sometimes I look at like old episodes where you just let it get away f- from you a little. You got a little bit. puffy. You got a little puffy. You know, like right. uh, a lot of like, uh, you know, I think when it, like the grind kind of like first starts, he's like you spend a lot of time in airports. You're not yeah. sleeping a lot. You know, like there's like a lot of shit going on. And then I think once you catch like a rhythm with it. I was able to kind of balance out my life a little bit more, but I've gone through times like in my like mid twenties where I was in like phenomenal shape college, like, you know, like 
just drinking too much, kind of like fat face. And then I think I like let it slip a little bit. And then like, that's when I was like, oh shit. Like when I was looking at myself, I was like, oh, that same sort of like college puffiness thing that I didn't like. So what do you do now? Like, well, how do you, how do you rain? We like to talk about like fitness health tips once a week. It's called Um, Chrissy. It's called fatty corner with Chrissy chaos. So what I try to do, (laughs) what I try to do is, uh, I, here's what I do, honestly. I do, like, push-pull situations, so I'll do, like, um, chest and back on the same day. Okay. And I'll usually do, like, maybe 10 lifts, right? Okay. So like a deadlift or something? So five and five. Like, you know, I'll do a bench press and then go into, like, a lap pull-down and then, you know, free weight on the chest press and then do another back sort of back. back. Yeah. Run and back. Yeah, chest back, chest back, chest back, chest back. And then I do cardio and I try to do, like, I don't know, like, on a good – Day five miles, but usually like at least two wow. and a half. Yeah. Every day, seven days a week, you run. Uh, five, I do like five probably. But f- but two and a half miles, the bare minimum, typically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you do that. You do your jogs after you lift weights. Yeah, got it. That so you end it all. That's yeah. how I end it. Yeah, through I the city or on a tready. On a treadmill. I can do either or. So, like, I live really close to Central Park, so I rip that loop a lot. Um, but then otherwise, like, I like the treadmill. Like, I kind of like the mental game, like man versus machine, you know? Like, right. how far did I go and how yeah. fast did I do it yesterday? Can yeah. I do it a little bit more this time? You know, like, after every song, I'll go up one-tenth of a mile per hour on the treadmill. You know, yeah. like, situa- things like that. Like, That's I like to kind of, like, challenge myself. And it's kind of just, like, a meditative thing for me at this point. Like, I, I, I think if I was just trying to, like lose weight or stay in shape, I would have fallen off the wagon by now. But I kind of like it as just sort of like a meditative experience, like end in the sauna, you know, like feeling good kind yeah, of yeah. situation. So chest back one day, then I'll do shoulders, abs the next next day, buys, tries the next day, legs the next day, and then cardio stacked on all of those. On all of those. And then, okay, yeah. And then, but what about the eating? I feel like so the eating is good. Eating's like pretty good. Because what is health? Wealth. But there you go. Uh, eating's pretty good, but I also, I like, if I want pizza, I'll eat pizza. If I want a burger, I'll eat a burger. Like if I want a slice of cheesecake, I'll eat a slice of cheesecake. You but know what I mean? But just one, you'll have but, balance. Yeah, but Porsche, like I'll, I'll make sure I don't go crazy on it. And then here's the other thing is like, I really enjoy it. You know what I right. mean? Like if I, I think a lot of times like people will like be talking on the phone and like eating a fucking donut or something and they don't even remember like the thing that they just ate. Right, you know right, what I mean? right, right. Where, and that I could, I've been guilty of that too, but it's like for me, like, all right, I'm going to eat a Hershey bar and I'm going to eat it like each square. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm just going to put it on yeah, my like tongue. Just really, I'm just going to like yeah. let it, you know, I'm just going to marinate in this whole thing and I'm yeah. going to like really enjoy it. Like I'll freeze a Reese's peanut butter cup, you know, and just like take like the little smallest bites. little bites. Yeah. Like just, I really like make love to that Reese's Dude, peanut butter I like butter it. Cup. I like it. You're a real psycho and I like <laughs> it. I like it. I knew I liked you a lot because you're a psycho. Okay, here we go. Chrissy Confessionals. This is what we do at patreon.com. So Okay. Christy Comedy fan writes in. They need help with a question. We asked the guests, you know, can we help this person out? So this is from Soy Culo, um, which I think means I am butt, right? Culo is butt, Soy Culo. Um, my mom found my anal toys, and now she thinks I'm gay. But I'm not. I just enjoy ass play. Hey, she keeps making fun of me. Interesting. She keeps making fun of me, but she's sweet enough to keep it to herself and not tell the rest of my family. Should I just go with it or just keep telling her that I love to fuck chicks, but I also like my asshole to be pegged? What should I do? So this is interesting because this is a this is a relationship with mom who, you know, she has her son here. She she found his 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 uh, ass dildo stuff. And uh, and it's not really lashing out at him. She's no, like, she's kind of just like actually, they sound like they have kind of a sweet relationship. Honestly. Yeah, it's borderline borderline weird, but, well, but it does sound sweet. There's yeah, there's some boundaries not being respected. Yeah, uh, yeah. by both parties. But I think overall, it sounds like he's got a really sweet relationship with his mom. I would just like put up with the kind of ball busting that mom's doing and kind yeah. of keep it moving. Like, I, I think the more that you try to sit mom down and being like, I just like the dildos, mom, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like really trying to get her over to yeah. your side. Like, I don't think that that's, I think that's going to take things further to the left. Right, right. Take things further to the left, which we don't want. If we have any hope for this country, we got to get back to the right. <laughs> oh, um, <no>. so, <laughs> I'm kidding. Shout out Brazil. Um <laughs> Yes, Pimp. I do have one, uh, one more question for you. What was there the worst job you ever worked? Ooh, good question, Pimp. Yeah. So, you know what? I had good jobs, mostly. Uh, 
Oh, the worst job was I, I worked in the shoe section at Sports Authority. <laughs> <laughs> like I was about to say, like I've had like really you know because like I, I, I worked at like the when I was in high school I worked at the park district like slinging Gatorades and like okay. sunflower seeds at like the softball complex okay. and I always really liked that because like I could bring a boombox and I'd have like a stack of magazines right. and I'd just kind of like watch guys playing softball yeah, yeah. and I was like it was kind of like good vibes and then I had another job that I did forever where I was doing architectural tours of the Chicago River and Lake Michigan like that was those like are awesome. I yeah. took one of those on the boat. Maybe you took mine or something. Dude, Who I knows? did. No, I, 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 I love that tour, the architectural yeah. tour. The great tour. Yeah, so I did that. So, like, that was yeah. awesome. But hey, this... did you know Al Capone had a building where he had a car elevator in it? Yeah, I do. I took do. An ar- yeah, 35 right. Wacker. The, <laughs> uh, the, the, the jeweler building. The there jeweler's is. building. So, uh, it was a fun fact on the on the tour. Yeah. So, uh, but, um, but, sport, but retail sucked because, first off, you didn't make any money. Yeah. You're like very much like, like, uh, hey, Sean, like, uh, you know, it's khaki pants. Those are a little on the olive side. You know, like just shit really? like that. Yeah, yeah, that oh. was weird. And then. I would have jerked off in that guy's cupcakes. The worst part of it was, it was like before, it was before, like now I think all the shoes are in the back kind of thing, but they had it. So it was like all the shoes were out. Ah, I see what and you mean. So it was like fucking chaotic. Like oh, no weird. order to it. So it's like people be like, do you have this in a, in a 10 and a half? And then I go to the computer. It's like, yeah, we have it at 10 and a half. It's somewhere in this fucking stack. You know, like with the, the fucking ladders, like the oh, Harry Potter library God. and like climbing up what the ladders. What a stupid system. And then it's like you'd find something, right? And you'd open it up and you'd see like some guys like old lawn mowing shoes because people used to steal all the time. And the m- method of stealing back in the early aughts would be to like wear in shitty shoes, put on the ones that you like, put the shitty shoes back in the box. So then I'd like inevitably pull down this 10 and a half, open up, be like, yep, got your shoes. And they'd open it up and they'd be like old ratty, like somebody's shoes that, you know, like so somebody's what old do you do? shoes. What? I, you just are like, Ugh. and then they're like mad at you. And then you're like, what? I'm so sorry. I'm making like seven fifteen an hour. Yeah. Like trying to figure this what out. Year, what year is this? So about in like 2002, 2003. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that job sucked. That and then two, like because like, yeah, you know, and then like you'd work like a 40 hour week and then, you know, like the paycheck would be like 356 yep. bucks. for yeah. the, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, damn. <laughs> Dude, is Sports Authority even open anymore? I don't think, so. I don't no, think they have yeah. it in New York anymore. No. Yeah. So I was uh, uh, RIP to Sports Authority, but that was like. Uh, retail was, you know, and people are like rude to you in retail, of course. and you know, it's just yeah. like not. My a My dad job. would be the type of guy who would get his shoes from Sports Authority. He'd, he'd, he'd be this guy. He'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like hey, he'd be like, hey, uh, do you got these in a thirteen wide? <laughs> he, he would always say, yeah, "You got these in a wide." Yeah, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? A but wide?" But they do make wide. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But he would always do that <laughs> um, in a wide. So wait, okay, so. So what, what else, other than hot ones, what else, what else are you doing? Anything else going on? Or is all your effort and energy in hot ones? No, Not that you need to be doing anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, we have, like, some spinoffs and stuff that we do. Like, we have, like, Truth or Dab thing. And then, like, connected to hot ones, there's, like, you know, you can go, like, corporate appearances or, like, go to colleges or whatever. Oh, wow, but, you go to colleges? And then yeah, what's yeah, the gig? Yeah. Like, you do the hot ones with the students kind of thing? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, a, a coach on the team or, like, whatever, you yeah. know? So it gets and it's kind of cool or, like, or it'll be, like, with, like, another celebrity. Like, I just did one at Central Arkansas with Caleb from Stranger Things or whatever. Sure. So, like, wow. yeah, but, like, they do these, like, big auditorium events. They're usually, like, super positive experiences because the college kids are just, like... right hype that somebody's there doing something and so like it's always like an awesome experience so with all of those things but I, I'm not like I'm not like Kevin Hart or The Rock like I don't have some world takeover plan and be like oh I gotta put my yeah. I gotta get this bucket and this bucket and this bucket and that and that like I'm not really like that like to me this is all enough for me I'm not like trying to right. you know do anything bigger like hijack your feed or attention any more than it is it's kind of like we have this episode at 11 a.m. on Thursday. Like, come hang. That's if what you it want. is. Yeah. Well, that's what I think too. I think you putting all your effort into one thing is great. This is the uh, Kevin Hart and the Rock are showing up <laughs> and to beat the shit out of you. Um, uh, but 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 I think that that there's like you know because I remember like when I was playing sports, I wanted to play all these sports, and my dad was like, just pick one, pick one, focus on one. Don't because you scatter your energy too much. 
And then all of a sudden, that's why, you know, with comedy, you know, like I do my podcast, but like stand up is everything. Like I, I put everything into stand up. That's what I want. And I feel similar to you where it's like, I, you know, we talk about all the time. Like, I don't care if I'm ever on a sitcom or in a movie. I like what I have now. I like how it is now. And I like, you know, having kind of like being able to like be able to sell a lot of sell tickets, have my family have whatever they want, but also kind of have anonymity because it's like yeah. I'll get recognized every day, but it's by my fans who really support me where then the other people be like, I don't know who the hell you are. And that's actually the way you want it to be generally famous like a Kevin Art of the Rock. I'm telling you, that's got to no. suck. You no. don't want that. No. You know, because you have people that are like, I love you. I love you. But then like somebody like my mom doesn't even know how to get on YouTube, wouldn't know who you are, but she wouldn't know who The Rock and Kevin Hart are and want to like touch them and grab them. But you probably, I would imagine, have nothing but mostly great fan interactions because they support you. But here's the thing that happens with me is that the, I think like the way the clips are shared and like the way that it's out there and like somebody, did, you know, so it's like my face, I think is more recognizable than my profile, if right. that makes sense. So I do get like a lot of, is that the hot wings guy? Like that yeah, sort that of stuff. thing. And then that, like, like I try not almost to almost like dehumanizes change. you. It's like, yeah, yeah. you become a, you be, and like what's, what's, and I'm not going to complain about this because again, like champagne problems thing. But like, if I hear Sean, then it's like, yo, what's up? And right. like, when I hear Sean, that's always like a good positive reaction. But it's like, are you the guy from Hot Wings or like that That's sort of an thing? Issue, yeah. And then other people look, and then it's like somebody gets a picture, and then somebody comes up, and they're like, "What do you do? Like, why yeah, I, like I, that?" And then like, how do I explain that? Like, I have a chicken wing talk show. I don't know. You know, like, <laughs> and then you have like, uh, "Why a chicken wing talk show?" Like that. And it's like once you go Dude. through all of those conversations so much, so now when I hear like, "Is that the guy from Hot Ones? Is that Chicken Wings?" Bob? Like, I don't change my no. life at all. I Dude, don't change my wavelength. Literally I just that. Is what you just we have the same life, obviously different, you know, different ways. To, you know, I'm sure your thing is much more more profile than mine, but it's the same. Ex my life is that is people. When I hear Chrissy, somebody says Chrissy, I know that they're a genuine fan and it's all good. But when I hear, oh, are you that guy from MTV? Or how do I know you? Yeah, how I do know I, you, and yeah. then I'm like. You know, respectfully, I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm like, so I'll, I'll now I'll just be like, I don't even know myself. I don't know. And I'll just keep walking. Or sometimes pe somebody will take a picture with me, you know, a fan. And then the person who took the picture be like, I don't know who you are. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know who you are either. <laughs> yeah, I didn't right. ask for this. Yeah, like, I why, just put why my, am I explaining myself yeah, I, to you? I yeah, just yeah, put yeah. A, a fucking story I made up about 9-11 out there. <laughs> now, who's a, who's a dream guest? <laughs> who's a dream guest that you think is still unfeasible to, to book? Like, you cannot, like, you can't oh. get them. I think it's out of reach for you. Like, you reach out to them and they're like, I'm not doing it. Oh, well, you know what? I, you, but what happens with that is, like, there have been so many guests that were, like, originally a no or originally a pass that, like, two years later end up in the studio. So sometimes I don't want to jinx it by talking about oh, it. okay. But I always think, like, 50 Cent was kind of made in a lab to be a Hot Ones guest. Hell yeah. And we haven't had him in. So, like, if I were to, like, take some sort of, like, white whale that's still out there, like, on the hunt, he's probably my go-to for that. Oh, black whale. I... <laughs> I had a question for you, actually. Oh though. yeah, I'm on the show. When you were talking about, well, Give me when, some you were, hot sauce. when you were talking about podcasts and whatever, yeah. you know, because I always think that model for a comedian yeah. makes sense, right? Right. Where you're touring, right, and then you have podcasts as like your home base, where yep. it's like, all right, if you're not in like Virginia Beach this weekend, you can like check in with like the podcast, so you have like this home base. And then t I find that comedians are good podcast hosts. Like I kind of think that the podcast world is kind of like what am radio or whatever yeah. used to be yeah. right and it turned like comedians naturally are like good sort of radio hosts or just a mic talking or like whatever but do you think there are too many like ceos with podcasts do you think that there are too many like actors with podcasts yes. or what's your take on that whole thing i think the same way we were just talking about this actually i think like the oversaturation of podcasting is, you know, a problem. We had um, uh, pest control people come in here. We have to. It's part of the lease. There's no rats except Pimp. Uh, <laughs> so, so, we, you know, we've had, so we've, so we had pest control people and me and Pimp were sitting in here and then the pest control guy saw the equipment up and he was like, oh, what do you guys do? And we we're like, oh, you know, we just do a podcast. Like, you know, no needs, reason to explain. I doesn't know who they were. No problem. And he, they were like, oh, cool. They were like, oh, we're going to start a podcast about pest control. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, like you know, it's like everybody just 
thinks they can do it and wants to do it. What I'll say about the actors and actresses doing it that, you know, kind of are just doing it for the money because that's what they are doing. That, that's the reverse way. I do think, like, listen, everybody's going to, you know, uh, you know they have the, they're right. They're entitled to do that. But I do think, like, you know, it's a sprint. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think that the longevity of it, like all my peers who got, who've gotten huge, Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, all these guys that are big They've all the same thing. They've been doing it for years yeah. and years and years where a lot of these other people, I mean, Obama and Springsteen right, had a right, podcast yeah, and it went like away. Because right. yeah. eventually, no matter how famous you are, you, you no matter how, fa- you know, Kanye could come out with his podcast tomorrow and it's going to be the hottest thing in the world for about a year. And then people get used to it. People get bored. And then you have to be funny, original, interesting and keep going. And then if you don't, then the money starts to go down and then they immediately abandon it. So my take on all that is just keep going. Like literally it's a marathon. All these people, if they're doing it for the wrong reasons, will come, they'll get their money, but there's enough money for everybody. And then they'll, they'll once it gets hard, they're out because they were never in it for the right reasons. You could pay me or not pay me. I just like doing this, right. you know? So that, that, that's how I feel about it. But as far as if I, you know, a young comic today, I would tell him, her, or they to, if they're going to start a podcast, it better be a very, very, very specific idea that's niche or don't do it at all and stick to getting on stage, doing stand-up and putting out your clips because that's, at least in the stand-up world, what's been catching on, why people are... Now it's like, it used to be, oh, go do an hour special. That's what everyone talked about. Well, what's your hour? Now we do them, but from a business point of view, it's like, what's the point of me putting out my hour? Nobody's going to watch anything for 60 minutes. We don't have the attention spans anymore because of how much our world's changed. So like Andrew Schultz, whole career and life changed when the first thing he did was put out a 60 minute special, but in one minute clips for, you know, 60 weeks, I think it was. And that's what he did. And that, so every week he's kind of like how Thursday, every Thursday is hot ones. Every week there was an Andrew Schultz clip from a special Mm -hmm. and then everything changed. So that's, you know, that's what, you know, we've all been doing now. But I personally think for me, it's like multiple streams of revenue as well. Like I got the podcast, I got my stand up, um, I'm hosting a TV show all on like my own terms and doing it my way because, um, you know, I kind of feel like everybody now sees like wh- how much money there was in podcasting. Even it's the same in stand-up. You'll have people that ha- they have n- have never done stand-up before, but they have a theater or a comedy club sold out because they're famous. And that's fine. People will go see you once, but then when they come back and see you again, if you're doing the same thing and the show hasn't been elevated, your, your audience gets cut in half and then you come back a third time, it gets cut in 25%. And then before you know it, you have people who are doing theaters to now they can barely sell out a comedy club because they never change. Where I look at it as it's been a long journey for me. I started this in 2010 and it's like only now am I being like, oh, like I'm, you know, becoming like bigger and, and, and you know, finally like selling out wherever I go but it took a long, long time. So a lot of people want these shortcuts. It just, it's not going to work. That's why somebody who tries to do your idea, it's just not going to, it's just not going to work. I just know you, people think that, you know, when somebody makes something look really easy, it's usually never easy. It's usually like, you know, they used to say Dane Cook was an overnight success. It's like, no, no, he was 22 years before anybody knew his name in 2004. You know, you should have Dane Cook on Hot Ones. I saw you know oh, what I saw one. him I th- uh, in LA. I think we work out at the same gym. I actually saw. Do you? Him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what body part are you doing? Like, I was I was right next to him on the treadmill. Like I was like, oh. How's his face? His face looks like it's, he's got some surgery. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's like it's actually kind of like yeah. Like, but that's good for hot ones because then you can't show the pain because your face doesn't move. Uh, that's true. Good, there it's, it's, if it's already like an allergic. Have you had Kim reaction. K on? Kimmy K, Kim Kardashian. No, we had Chloe on the uh, last season. Oh, nice. How was she? She was cool. Uh, she brought like the Hulu cameras and everything. Oh, that's and, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Were you like, is OJ your dad? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't really. Oh, yeah, yeah the hot one over. I tell me. There she is. So, she's beautiful, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, all the Kardashians are beautiful, even Rob. <laughs> Shout out, Rob. Shout is out. it all at the point now where you book everybody, or is it like a booking department that they'll be like, hey, these are who we have? So we have uh, Kelly, who's our booker. And so, like, and then the way that it works is we just have this, like, you know, giant Excel doc that is just like a bajillion names. And, like, the last time we reached out to them, like, the projects that they have coming out, like, is the trail a little warm? Yeah. Is it kind of cold? Like, are they, like, kind of hard pass? Are they kind of, like, doing that, like, not for this project, but the next yeah. one? And then, like, when is the next one? Kind 
kind of like all of that stuff. And then there's incoming stuff too. So it's like a movie studio or a record label or a publicist. Right. Like, so I think right Got now it. it's probably like a perfect 50, 50 split of like people that were actively pitching and then finally get the fish on the hook and set a date and get somebody on the table to like opportunities that are incoming that were like, Oh, that actually kind of works. Like, let's make that happen. Beautiful dude. Hot ones. Um, Venetia harassed Kelly. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, um, hot ones. Sean Evans, by the way, I, when you came in, we had never met. We had briefly texted and, and corresponded on DMs. But I'm telling you what I said before has even gotten bigger. Your positive energy, it just makes you feel good. It's like, you're, it's like doing ketamine. Oh, you shit. literally, you're like ketamine therapy. You're like Fuck, microdosing ketamine is you. It's, yeah, it's great, dude. You. And thank I hope you. you have a great day in the gym today. Is today shoulders and abs? <laughs> I already or? did. I was already at the gym today, and it literally was <laughs> shoulders and abs day. See? I know you. Did you have protein within an hour window? I did. I did. Went to the uh, Whole Foods bar right next door. Hell yeah. Big thing of, of rice, some beef with like balsamic, lots of broccoli, some sweated peppers. Feeling fucking good. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> all right, baby. Sean Evans, Hot Ones. You can catch them all over, uh, everywhere. You know, so what's your social media? Just tell them. It's Sean C, but like Baltic C Evans. That's it, baby. Go find them. Hot Ones. We love it. Hot and spicy. You know me. I love Latinas. And Sean, this has been great. And um, I want to hang out with you. All right, let's do it. Let's Seriously, do why it. don't we do a thing where we send each other like one voice memo a week or something? Just check no, it but in. Let's, like, actually, let's, let's hang. Let's get Sal in the mix. Like, yeah. let's, let's make this happen. Like, well, that Sal's seems dead. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> so, but he'll, he'll be... Well, R.I.P. Maybe Q will come or something. Yeah. We can sub him in. We can yeah. sub him. No, Sal, yeah, he's dead, but he told Her. me he'll text you next week. All right, fine. Deal. Love Deal. you guys.